All right, so ladies, understanding vacuum gauge readings in the packet, you'll see it gives you this cheat sheet. This will be on your ASE. The ASE will give you a vacuum reading and they will ask you to interpret. Any, anybody have any idea what may be normal? 17, 21. Yeah, 18, 19, 20, 21 inches of mercury. Do you even know what that means? If you were to have this engine making vacuum and you were to hook it up to a puddle of mercury in a long tube of glass, it would literally suck it up 18, 19, 20, 21 inches of distance. So it's just a measure of the suction. It's almost like negative PSI. It's like PSI of vacuum, except not pounds per square inch. So if you look at this, We've got all of these. This one's good, right? About 20 inches of mercury and steady. These other ones, needle very low and steady, maybe because of a vacuum or an intake leak. We've got um, the needles normal at idle, but fluctuates as engine speed is increased. If you think of engine speed increasing, the valves have to close faster, right? The valves needing to close faster due to engine RPM requires better performance of the valve springs. If we had a weak valve spring, the valve spring might not close fast enough. We could actually catch that on a vacuum reading with a fluctuating needle at RPM. It'd be smooth at, smooth at idle. At, the higher the RPM would be, the needle would start to fluctuate more. We may, we may do an initial diagnosis of, hey, we think you got a valve spring, maybe weak. Which one? We don't really know. We need to do teardown. Um, there's quite a few other examples right here. But the key that I would say, the spark notes version of this would be, if it's a valve train problem, the needle's probably gonna oscillate in some way. It's gonna bounce and fluctuate. If it was something more like, um, let's say, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick another one that's interesting. Um, all right, steady needle but low at idle, possibly improper valve or ignition timing. So if you think about the valves, the valves not closing properly would cause pulses of pressure or, or insufficient vacuum. That's the big point on the ASC. There's some other ones you guys can study. Now, when we go to actually check vacuum, because this engine is the FKS or any of these Atkinson cycle, uh, they do so much valve overlap, meaning the intake valve and the exhaust valve are both open at the same time, overlapping opening. It, it doesn't really make consistent vacuum. And that's for fuel economy and emissions. As a result, they put a, they put a vacuum pump on it and they run the vacuum pump off the cam to give vacuum booster assist. That's not where we want to test it. So if you pull off a vacuum line at the booster and you test vacuum, you're just testing the vacuum pump. You're not actually measuring the engine's vacuum, raw vacuum. Who knows where the actual raw vacuum would live? What area of the engine? Around the intake. The intake, the reason why you got the piston coming down, that's trying to suck the air in and do a negative pressure, right? That is a vacuum. Like a campfire. So the so the valve opens, the piston pulls down, it's trying to suck in air. It tries to suck in air into in through the head, it tries to suck in air in through the intake. The problem is we got this throttle body right here. Or if it was old school, it'd be the carburetor, the dang carburetor. The carburetor has the butterfly valve closed. So the vacuum lives between the top of the piston all the way out to the butterfly valve, which is the restriction for that air being sucked in. This out here is not vacuum. If you pull this off, it's not vacuum. This is not vacuum. Matter of fact, what this hose is, it's for the, PC, the closed PCV system. So this is a way to get fresh air. Anything plugged into the air intake is gonna be fresh air. The intake manifold is going to be where the vacuum lives. So we got a point we think is probably going to have vacuum. We haven't tried it yet. We don't have the correct adapter, so I'm going to hold it and make it work. Uh, can somebody start this car? Promise me it's in neutral. Yeah. Before we let her put off the clutch. I heard it. Go ahead. Try again. Pause that. Pause the video. Check. Go ahead and crank it. Alright, so that's definitely got some vacuum. If you look, right, you can count. Alright, so I'm gonna hold this 
look on here. Now look. I'm making a whole lot of noise. What though, this is in high idle, so we may have to actually wait. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys see right now? You see that number? 15. I'll hold it up so maybe some people can see. 15, 14, 15. What do you think will happen if he punches it and holds it wide open? It should go back to about zero, right? Test it! Alright, that was fine. Uh, so really, this thing is really only making about 15 uh, inches. So we could simulate a problem. Who can disconnect a coil? Ignition coil, disconnect on. Oh. Notice it's got, it's making less vacuum. It, because it doesn't have four cylinders really pumping correctly anymore. It's only got three. Disconnect another one. Uh, so obviously, you could feel this misfire, but the misfire also shows up in the vacuum gauge. Now this doesn't have any faults, but if this had like a weak valve spring, we would rev it up and this gauge would start to, this needle would bounce around and oscillate. So we can plug it back in. Uh, no, I don't think it will. It'll run on two though. So again, this is a good uh, tool to test some things. Who's got a strong boot? Who can try to clog the cat, clog the exhaust on this by shoving your boot in the tailpipe really good? <laughs> try it. Try to clog it up. And you could even use pig mats if you want it. Let us know when you're ready. Alright, let's rev it up. Just like a just a throttle blip. Rev it. All right, let up. Blast it wide open. All right, wide open again. You notice it has really no power because we got a restriction of the exhaust. Wide open again and hold it. I think they knocked his boot off, it, off of the exhaust. So this vacuum reading can actually test the cat. I'm gonna help install it out here. That way it's off. So this can actually test a cat. When you punch it wide open, it should go to zero, and it should more or less kind of stay there. But if the cat's clogged, you'll try to punch it, and it, it may go near zero, and it'll be creeping its way back up because it won't make enough vacuum because it can't move enough air. So if you think of the engine, it's a big vacuum pump. It sucks air in, it pushes air out. If you take a deep breath in your lungs, fill your lungs all the way. All right, now fill them again. You can't because you didn't breathe it out. So if the cat's clogged or the exhaust is restricted, it will affect the intake readings. That's why you couldn't take two breaths without exhaling. So this can tell you a lot of stuff. That cheat sheet you guys can have, you'll see at least one to three of those questions on the ASC.